a light has shone a child is born to us the birth of jesus is the mystery of incarnation that begins the new covenant prophet isaiah gives the right setting the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light for a child is born to us the angels celebrate singing glory to god and peace to men of good will the birth of jesus in a stable and lying in a manger depicted the sad story of the world stands in the need of liberation as the shepherds were attentive the angels offered them the truth we bring you good news for to you a savior is born the shepherds found the savior and paid their homage we need jesus jesus is the light that can dispel all darkness india and the world are afflicted with continuous turmoil the corona virus pandemic has played havoc all over the world the world needs peace and jesus is that prince of peace let us open our hearts and our lives to jesus so that we may be filled with his light of love joy and peace In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Saint Athanasius of Alexandria says for God became man so that man may become God so that we are deified so that we are able to see the glory of heaven and today is the day when God himself has deified human kind he has made to see the beauty of heaven to to behold the king of heaven and therefore the Emmanuel the eternal promise of god is actualized today and as we rejoice as we show that gladness in our heart and in our life let us thank him for the word made flesh and dwelt among us and as we partake in this today's eucharistic banquet 
let us ask this word made flesh that he may heal our broken world that he may heal our broken humanity for the time that we have distanced ourselves from this world made flesh let us ask pardon and forgiveness and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this mystery of incarnation I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints. and to you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the lord our god may almighty god have mercy on us forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life amen fully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it grant we pray that we may share in the divinity of Christ who humble himself to share in our humanity who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen 
A reading from the book of Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, Your God reigns. Hark your watchmen lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing. You waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of his nature, upholding the universe by the word of power. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has obtained is more excellent than theirs. For to what angel did God ever say, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship Him. The Word of God. Savior, he is 
you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe away all our sins. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I came here from Latur, which is one of the district in Maharashtra and which became very famous in 1993 for the earthquake. I just want to share with you at the beginning of my homily this testimony of a Hindu woman who very often comes to the church where we have our presence. It's a minority community and we have hardly 50 to 60 Catholics in and around. But after my presence in this place, I found among all these Christians, among all these Catholic people, the presence of this Hindu woman is more powerful. Why is it so? Many of the Christians, Catholics come to the church only on Sundays. But this woman to whom I had an opportunity to en have an encounter, she comes every week to the church, no matter maybe morning, mid-afternoon, evening or whatever time possible for her. She is a Hindu, married to a Hindu man who, who takes care of the camels and that is how they earn their daily bread and she has four children. And when I had an opportunity to encounter, she said, I heard about Jesus from somewhere and after hearing about Jesus, I have fallen madly in love with Jesus and therefore whatever way possible whenever I get little chance to come out of my home I try to come to church and the only thing that I want to do in my life is to bring someone to Jesus I want to give Jesus to someone and therefore whenever she comes there is someone who always accompany us whether it is a, another woman whether it is an elderly lady or someone, someone is always with her and the thing that she carries from the church is a bottle of holy water and when I asked her what about your family she said my husband has strictly warned me if you speak about Jesus if you go to church or if I see you found praying I will break your both the legs and still she says Whenever he goes out for work, whenever he is busy in his own schedule, whenever they all sleep, I try to say my prayers. The only earnest desire she has is to receive baptism. But the underlying point of her life is, I want to give Jesus to others. A woman who is not baptized, 
a woman who has not received any catechism but yet a very powerful a very profound experience of christ my dear brothers and sisters christmas is that joy which tells you and me to give jesus to others to help others to have an encounter with jesus and at this christmas what is that you and me earnestly desire what is that that we long for as prophet isaiah in chapter 9 verse 2 he says people in the darkness have seen a great light and i think today's world is groping in the same darkness the eventualities the happenings that is happening in and around they are so confusing we cannot know them what sequence is going going to follow next moment we are preparing for something but the eventualities the happenings are happening something else the world is in totally turmoil the world is tumult and it is absolutely unpredictable the daily situations in our life they are changing and amidst all this jesus is taking birth jesus is being born in this world and what is that powerful message that he is getting for you and me in today's world that god the father still loves the world that god the father still cares for the world and every even eventualities that is happening in our life there is a purpose there is a plan and there is a love of god no matter we may fail to understand it no matter we may fail to grasp these mysteries but the babe of bethlehem today is telling you and me again that i am the master of the world the situation in which you prevail i can overcome them only you give me prominence only you give me precedence in all that is happening and you will see the darkness which has engulfed the world it will be forgone it will be lost only if you allow the light of christ to shine in our life my dear brothers and sisters humanity cannot survive with god humanity cannot survive without the almighty presence of god and i think that is the message the babe of bethlehem is bringing to you and me saint francis of assisi says let us bring bethlehem into our own family let us bring bethlehem in our own life let us bring bethlehem in our own community because bethlehem will show us the stars which enlighten the life of everyone who encounter christ every shepherd every wise man every angel every person point out to this star the star which was the symbol of christ my brothers and sisters let us ask this word made flesh to be born in our life to be born in our heart christ was born for you and me let us now be born for christ in our own way in this world of ours today where we have so many difficulties so many challenges so many troubles and problems let us ask emmanuel to be born again born again with the message of heaven peace of heaven serenity of heaven and therefore let us become light bearers Christ brought light to the world and now it is our duty it is duty of every christian every catholic to take this light in the life of others as i said in the life of this woman the only earnest desire she had is to give jesus to others as jesus has given himself in the manger now it is our duty let us take this jesus to those families let us take to jesus to those persons who have no one to care who have lost hope who have lost everything in this pandemic maybe they are awaiting that someone will come with the light of hope that someone will come with the light of grace that someone will come with the light of god in their life 
and enlighten their life enlighten their families maybe the babe of bethlehem is giving this message to you and me let us be the life bearer in the life of others let us not distance ourselves from the love of jesus rather let us come and behold his glory because in him the broken humanity can find fulfillment of their life amen let us now stand and profess our faith i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his only son our lord he was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into death on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father almighty from there he will come to judge the living and dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen my brothers and sisters heavenly father you gave us a powerful message through the birth of jesus He came as a light that would dispel all darkness of sin. We open our hearts and our homes, our parish and our diocese to you. Fill us with your light of your presence. Our response, may the light of your presence dispel all darkness together. May the light of your presence dispel all darkness. We pray for our for Francis, for our bishops, priests and religious may they guide the church under their care during the pandemic to radiate the world around with the healing touch of Christ which will dispel all the pain and suffering of the world for these we pray to the lord may the light of your presence dispel all darkness father you chose bethlehem the royal city of david to be the birthplace of jesus the rejection by the jews symbolized the darkness of sin covering the world may jesus help us and use us to change the world around us for this we pray to the lord may the light of your presence dispel all darkness father We share the pain of Mary and Joseph as they saw your divine son born in a stable. The sad story of rejection repeats itself as Jesus comes today, knowing at the door. May our joy in opening the door to Jesus inspire others to welcome him. For this we pray to the Lord. May the light of your presence dispel all darkness. Father, for all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety that they may find relief and recovery. For this we pray to the Lord. May the light of your presence dispel all darkness. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies that they may make wise decisions for this we pray to the lord may, may the light of, of your presence, presence dispel all darkness. darkness pray for personal and local needs for this we pray to the lord May the, May the light, light of, of your, your presence dispel all, all darkness. Loving Father, the whole world celebrates the birth of Jesus your son. The joy of Christmas is the symbolic of the joy Jesus came to offer all humanity. The star shining outside even Christian house is a sign welcoming men and women of goodwill 
to come and pay homage to Jesus. May all people accept Jesus. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of yours and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our deliverance of His holy church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day, when you have manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight, and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind. So that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink, drink this, this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing hope. May this sacrifice of a reconciliation we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, our Pope Francis, and our bishops, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers to, of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ Lord Jesus Christ you said to your apostle peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other the sign of peace Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of the body and blood of Jesus not bring me to condemnation, but may the mercy and grace and protection of mind and healing bring me. Behold the world made flesh the Emmanuel who desires to be born in our heart happy are we who are called to the banquet of the lamb lord i am not worthy that he should enter under my roof but only say a word and my soul shall be healed may the body and blood of jesus keep us safe for life everlasting amen My Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you amen let us pray grant o merciful god that just as the savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us so he may be the giver even of immortality who lives and reigns forever and ever amen my dear brothers and sisters on behalf of the fathers on my own behalf and on behalf of brother wish you all a graceful meaningful And happy christmas may infant jesus once again be born in our families and continue to accompany us in our journey this year had been very tough time for most of us in the families and in the parish nevertheless god had been gracious to all of us in spite of having Tough time we have come out to glorify God to honor God thank God for the fast one month of our time we had masses services and so we are able to receive the body of Christ in different ways i thank the lord for keeping us all united and also strengthening one of our, all of us in our faith May baby Jesus be born once again in our families in our personal lives and continue to bless our families. A special word of welcome to Father Sandeep Koshal. 
He is from Latur. He is the seminary director and the superior of the community. I invited him last month to be with us for this celebration. He readily accepted to be with us. And today he has offered mass for us, prayed for us, and made our life holier. Thank you, Father Sandeep, for your dedication, your time. Special word of welcome to our choir group. They have taken the trouble to practice and have taken their time out to be with us this morning to celebrate Mass with us and to beautify the choir. Thank you and God bless you. My dear brothers and sisters, every day church has been cleaned and kept neat by Maggie. Every mass has been served by Ravi. As office, concerns are taken care by Priya. I thank them wholeheartedly. Ever since the pandemic has begun, and ever since we have begun offering masses, early in the morning we have youth serving us, sanitizing outside the church and inside giving their valuable time and dedication and love for St. Louis Parish. And since 15 days, they have been with us, bringing out a beautiful, decorative, attractive crib outside. Without mentioning anybody's name, I thank them sincerely for their commitment and love for St. Louis family. Keep them in your prayers. They have a long way to go in your future life. May they all be dedicated and be Christ-like in their life and may always be true Christians in their way of living. Once again, I wish all of you a graceful Christmas. Have a nice celebration in the families. Crib will be open in the evenings. You are most welcome to come to the churches. From 6 to 9, you can be around the crib and pray for yourself from this evening onwards. One thing wishing you a graceful Christmas. God bless you. Have a wonderful celebration. I also express my sentiments of gratitude to Father Ronnie and the community for the invitation to come and celebrate this Nativity Eucharist for all of you. Wishing you all very happy Christmas and graceful year to come. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us bow our head and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, by whom the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from this world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated this most holy day, drive far away you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God who will that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you sharers with Christ and his church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. To share the joy of incarnation, let us all go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.